Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel for this exclusive review on the 1-6 scale Bella Lugosi Dracula figure, the Deluxe Edition, by Caustic Plastic. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Instagram at DeanKnight333. Enjoy the review, folks. Now this is the Deluxe Edition, so it does come with a coffin, which is absolutely stunning. And it comes in that box there behind, which is beautifully done. The Deluxe Edition has this artwork on the front cover. I'm not too sure if the standard has different, probably does. But I really like this, with the smoke and the bats. But very impressed, straight out of the box. I need to put his cape on. And he comes with some incredible hands. Really good hand poses, really good sculpts. Painted really well, really like the fingernails. I'll show you those close up soon. That's the head sculpt that actually came on the figure in the box, but I thought for this beginning of the video with him waking up and rising out of his coffin, we'd go for this slightly more straight face. But very, very nice. It's really convincing. It's like a polished stone. But when I first opened it, I thought that was like genuine material, it's so well sculpted. So I'm very impressed with that. It does weigh a fair bit. So that kind of makes it feel even more high end. Beautiful material on his cape, a poseable collar and a nice magnetic base for him to stand on. We've got his candelabra there with the smoke rising, that cool effect. And that creepy smile. Looking forward to posing this guy up and having some fun. And that's pretty much everything you get. That's just my little <laughs> personal skull there. Just put it there for it would be appropriate. You don't get that with the piece. But really nice presentation, as always, from Caustic Plastic. Let's take a quick look at the credits for everyone involved. Now the folks at Caustic Plastic, in communication with the family of Bella Lugosi, making sure everything is as accurate as possible. And here are the awesome artists involved bringing this piece to us. Like it's going to be a very impressive piece once again. But I'm just very happy to see a horror character, you know. And I hope we see more. I know they're doing Nosferatu. They announced that at the San Diego Comic Con, I think. And that looks amazing. But this is one of the absolute original gangsters of horror. Bella Lugosi is Dracula. Just look at those eyes. <laughs> wow. Now before I take him out and we'll get a look at him turning on the rotating base, get a look at all the tailoring and the proportions. Let's just take one more look in the coffin from a different angle. And it certainly is a cool way to display the piece. It's really well sculpted. And it should be a lot of fun for photography and for other characters that you might have. I've got a few 1-6 scale Vampirellas and now I have a coffin. So expect to see you know, some stuff. There's going to be some stuff happening, especially around October. Best month of the year. Close the lid and we'll take a look. There's like a nice felt underneath black felt and on top we have three wolf's heads and a D for Dracula and a bat or a vampire or a vampire bat but really really nice work it's a big piece now it's all one sculpt I, when I first saw it, 
I went to move these and they don't move which is probably for the best because you you know you don't want to break one of those if they were you know flappy kind of handles that could happen and that wouldn't be good but they looked real I thought you could move them so mission accomplished there but yeah it's really nice Now with the piece on the rotating base, we'll take a look at the clothing and how it all comes together. The proportions seem really well done. The clothing feels very high-end in hand, very impressed with that. He is on that base, not going anywhere. It's a magnet base and he has magnets in his feet and very strong ankle joints. So there's no worries about him going anywhere, he's going to stay on that base. And now with a nice close up look at the clothing, you can see beautiful work that's gone into this. Incredible fine detail work of all the stitching and the material chosen is just top class. And there is this kind of stripe, a black stripe that's kind of shiny compared to the rest of his pants here. Goes all the way down the leg. But the bow tie, the shirt, the vest, the chain, the coat, all absolutely stellar work. Absolutely beautiful. The buttons. Nice shoes too, with real laces. Everything fits really well. <laughs> that face, absolutely awesome. All right, so now that I've shown you that, I'm going to put on the cape, which I've been looking forward to doing. Now I will say folks, I wouldn't have been, I would have been a bit lost if it wasn't for Fabio from Caustic Plastic getting in touch with me when he was letting me know this was on the way. Uh, he mentioned that the, the kind of strings here that come out from the cape on either side near the collar, uh, they actually have to go under the arm, that's how it was done originally, and then I guess it just ties together at the back. So I'm going to do that now, but I just wanted to let you know, yes, these, uh, the tie strings here. They go under the arms and then a knot at the back and that will hold uh, the cape in place. And plus there's a wire in here in the cape so you can wrap it around his neck as tight or as wide open as you like. Really nice material. All right, I'm gonna put it on now. All right, so I got it on there nice and tight. And the knot I decided to go with, just so I could easily undo it if I needed to, was like a shoelace knot, the same way I do my shoelaces. So I just uh, took the string from this side, took it under the arm. This one took it under the arm and around the back. They both meet. And then I pull it up nice and tight so that the collar comes quite far to the front. And then just tied a knot. And I'm sure everyone will have a different way of doing that. And yeah, it's nice and easy to get on there. And now the look is complete. There stands the absolutely iconic Bella Lugosi as Dracula. <laughs> now I've switched out the head sculpts and in 1931, it turns out thanks to the awesome information that Fabio gave to me today when I was talking to him about the figure, because usually I unbox these during the beginning of the review and see it for the first time with you guys while I'm filming it. But on this occasion, I woke up, it was there in the porch and I was quite excited to see him. So I did open him up while I was in the kitchen and I had a look at the piece. And I remember thinking I was quite surprised to see a Dracula figure with no fangs. 
uh, even considering he has two head sculpts. But I mentioned this to Fabio, and he then informed me back in 1931, Bela Lugosi actually used to paint his teeth black to give like a toothless kind of smile look. It's really creepy, and that's exactly what they've done here. They've captured it really, really well. So now that I know the facts, it makes total sense that I can't see any fangs because there's not supposed to be any. Apparently that was brought back later on with Christopher Lee as Dracula. Let's take a nice close-up look at this sculpt. It is absolutely, incredibly well sculpted. I believe, you know, I don't really score each individual part of a figure, but the only way I can really think to get across my feelings here is to do that in this case. So I'd give a 10 out of 10 to the actual sculpt capturing Bela Lugosi Dracula 100%. But the paintwork on this head is good. Maybe even very good. So I'd give the paintwork like an 8 out of 10. I've definitely been more blown away by previous caustic plastic head sculpts like Peter Sellers and Bud Spencer. I feel, me personally, kind of blew me away a little bit more. Maybe I'm getting spoiled and, you know, I've just seen so many. It's bound to happen. You see so many amazing pieces of work from different companies that your standards keep getting higher, I guess. But this is, no, don't get me wrong. I mean, look at it. It looks amazing, but I won't lie to you. It took me about 40 minutes to get this looking as good as it looks right now. At least I believe it looks good right now. It looks fantastic dead on like this. And it could be the lighting, but the paint app kind of loses something for me around here. And that's why I'm going to give the paint an 8 out of 10. But the sculpt, I feel like it's a 10 out of 10. Could be different on the other head sculpt. We'll try that out in a moment and we'll see. But that looks amazing. Like as my hand, as it comes in, blocks that light above. It looks really good. So it might just be my lighting. You gotta be honest and tell the truth. And I'm feeling like the, the head sculpt here, this one, is an eight out of 10 paint app, 10 out of 10 sculpt. So let's see how the other one looks. And they're pretty easy to change over so I can just do it here in front of you. And then on there. Let's just get them standing up straight again. Now, that's, oh wow, that's very, very good. See, it may seem weird giving a different score to a head sculpt that is just part of two head sculpts to come with one figure that's painted by the same folks in the same factory or whatever, but I'd go as high as like a 9 out of 10 for the paint app on this one. And the detail, the 5 o'clock shadow that you can just about pick up. I mean, he would have been wearing lipstick back then, wouldn't he? in those movies yeah this one though i'm just i'm really impressed with the paint app on this one look at that that wild stare it's really creepy so yeah 10 out of 10 for the sculpt on this one and then 9 out of 10 for the paint app from what i can see through my phone here on trusty samsung getting it done once again but really good Head sculpts. Nice that you get two. Doesn't always happen. Rarely happens, actually. But, you know, you're getting two head sculpts with this one. And I may very well actually go with this sculpt for my display. Uh, I think it's a very intense stare that he's given us right now. But that looks absolutely fantastic. Right, I promise I'm about to start posing him now. But I just had to film this because I looked up. Checking some messages and just looked up and was shocked at how real he looks. Look at his hands. He just looks so alive. Looks like he's in the room. Starting off small, just outstretch the arm, just putting some of his Dracula hypnosis on you. Mind control. Looks good. 
not the kind of figure where you have to worry about suits ripping or deteriorating or any of that stuff. It's all good material used here, folks. Come up with your pose, display your piece with pride. We do stuff like this, thanks to the great material they've used for his cape. Go ahead and wrap that around himself like Batman. Shielding himself from unwanted eyes. Possibly about to transform into a bat. But that looks really nice. There's that creepy hand there just to remind you. He's not quite right this fella. There's something a little bit off. With old Count Dracula. Is first for the crimson nectar grows more intense by the hour until it becomes too much and he has no choice but to leak your neck see how it looks with some rotating base action still holds out looks good yep I like it I like it a lot it's a good bows Ooh, looks good from that angle too. Passes the test. Some nice details on the kind of shoulders of his cape as well. That kind of embroidery stuff going on. We'll get a closer look at that in a minute. But yeah, it's a nice one. Nice pose. This is a really nice effect with one of his main accessories here. Well, apart from the hands, uh, this is like the main accessory other than the second head, of course. It's really nicely sculpted. Love the effect of the flame and the smoke. Done with the kind of, well, I'm not too sure. I was going to say cotton ball because that's what I would have used if I was doing this myself, but I'm pretty sure caustic plastic probably used something a bit more, you know, fit for purpose. Um, now, this looks nice, but it was it's quite soft. And it was quite warped when it came in the package. It's still a little bit wonky, as you can see. I've been trying to uh, bend it and then get it to kind of just stay there. And maybe I just need to warm it up in some water. But yeah, it's a little bit warped. So I'll have to take that into account with my final score. But visually, it's nice. And I do like that smoke effect. It'll look nice holding this. I'll get him to do that soon. But yeah, that's the main accessory. And then you've just got some hands. <laughs> that's my my little helper log don't worry about that and now here he is holding on to the accessory i know i think i called this a candelabra earlier but is that the one that holds multiple candles this is just like i don't know just a candle holder like a dragon obviously i think it's a dragon let's just zoom in I, uh, might be a dragon some kind of bird <laughs> anyway the Candle, wow, that's done really well. And lovely little glow of the flame going up into the smoke. Candle's done very, very well. Um, but yeah, mine was a little bit warped. Like I said, it still is a bit bent. And I'm going to try and fix that. Also, these little bits down here, they're also pointing up a bit. They're supposed to be flat, I think. So I'll just try and gradually get this to get more straight might involve a little bit of hot water then some cold water but yeah it's nice looking pretty cool accessory not much else he would come with maybe some bats or something but it looks good holding it definitely I love the effect of the smoke especially when the light's hitting it the way it is and turn the brightness down a bit more. Yeah, it's definitely nice. I'm going to start using this little backdrop that I got with an old 1-6 scale werewolf figure for some of the photography that I'm going to be doing with this figure and I'll put the pictures on Instagram folks so make sure you check that out at Dean Knight 333 but this background came with a 1-6 scale cool models werewolf figure. I always knew it would come in handy for Dracula. This is a nice one. 
hand position looks pretty good. Background helps. Beautiful vibrant red contrasting against the black and the white. Yep. You can display it like that and have no troubles. Well, one trouble. Anyone who comes around is going to be envious of your Bella Lugosi Dracula piece. Because there's classics and then there's classics. And that's what you're looking at. Well, I like the way this one looks so much that I'm going to stop posing it now and just let it sit in the collection for a day or two. I'll come back at you probably with the true light review that you see it in the natural light. But I'll move on to the final thoughts now and wrap up the review folks because I want to leave them posed like this for a while. I really like that one. Especially with this sculpt with the cape hanging around nice. Looking forward to seeing them up there with the rest of the horror icons. So we'll move on to the end of the review now, folks. Oh, before I do that, though, I do just want to give you a little detailed look at these hands because they are incredible. And you can check out the vein work on these and the long nails. Super creepy looking. Even the ring is painted exceptionally well. Yeah, that's very impressively done. Get another one for you. This is a equally creepy. And let me just turn up the brightness a little bit. Yeah, that's really painted well too. You can see around the knuckles and the joints in the finger. A little bit more colour in those. Very, very impressed with these. It's got a factor into the final score too. Costly Plastic have always brought the lightning and the thunder when it comes to hands. I'll never forget when I first saw the Bud Spencer hands, they blew me away. There's a lot of them, folks. Uh, there's other hands where the fingernails are not as long, they're more kind of human. So you've got fingers with long nails and other hands with short nails. But can't stress enough how well they are sculpted and painted. Absolutely excellent. All right, now we'll move on to my final thoughts. All right, so final thoughts. Score out of 10 for the Bella Lugosi Dracula Deluxe version. I give them a 9 out of 10. The reason it's a 9 and not a 10 is because of the slightly underwhelming paintwork on this particular sculpt for me. Uh, makes up for it on this sculpt. I thought this one's absolutely perfect. Certain angles, that one can look a bit strange to me, but from dead on the front, it definitely looks fantastic. Yeah, I mean, that's him for sure. That's going to be really debatable. Some people will absolutely love that sculpt and other people will maybe prefer this one like me. But that's just me thoughts on that. Also the candle holder uh, being pretty bent when it arrived and still being quite bent. Um, you know, that's a shame. If it was just a little bit tougher, then I guess that wouldn't happen. But it is quite soft. So I'll just use some hot water to fix that. But just those little things considered, I would give it a 9 out of 10, which is still a very, very high score. And I do definitely recommend you pick up the Bella Lugosi Dracula, because as you can see, it's a fantastic looking piece and pretty much essential. If you've got yourself a nice big horror collection in 1.6 scale, you might have yourself some vampires already. And maybe you're missing one of the OGs here. Now you have the opportunity to go ahead and pick him up. So a 9 out of 10 from me. Great looking piece. Really looking forward to putting him with the rest of the collection. And October fast approaching. It's really nice to have uh, 
a male vampire. I've got some vampirellas, so I've got some female vampires in the collection already. But now we have Bella. So let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye.